challenges to creating a twin out of a single person or attention to details. It's meticulous. I mean, you're actually down to small things that most people would never ever see. Of course, these days when you have a DVD and everybody can go through and freeze frame, frame by frame, now we have to cover everything. We can't let anything slide anymore. I go and I go as the other one character and I act with a photo double. This is my photo double. But you're in a lot of the stuff. Uh-huh. You just shoot over the top of the shoulder, uh, behind one of the stand-ins, so you see the back of them with the real actor. Then you go around for the opposite, opposite shot, opposite direction, and you just obviously switch them around. The least half a dozen different girls who are stand-ins who uh, basically are all the same size, same hair color, all look very much like Lindsay from behind or from the side, similar sort of look. It was actually quite fun. We went to the cast and crew party, and here were half a dozen of these girls, including Lindsay, all exactly the same height with the same hair, walking around and giggling the same way. It's very, very interesting. Making the illusion that there are two Lindsays in one shot. They shoot Lindsay twice. They shoot her standing on the right, and then they shoot her standing on the left. And the second time around, I have what's called an earwig, which has my voice recorded on it, so that I have timing. The earwigs, or the earpiece, is custom molded to her ear, so it will fit nobody else. These are tiny wireless speakers. Lindsay's not the only one that's worn them. We've got Dennis wore them, and Natasha wore them, and all the actors wore them whenever they were involved in one of the shots. This is a uh, digital audio workstation called Pro Tools. So we've already recorded her as the first character, and this is what it looks like. And we also put in some cue beeps for her in case she has to come in at a certain moment. This will be beamed into the actress's ear to keep her timing every time. I had to do one at camp, and it was really hard because I had to, we both, we both, me and me, <laughs> had to grab food at the same time, so it had to be timed perfectly, and that was pretty hard because I didn't know. So I usually go off my lines or other people's lines. So, but I mean, it's pretty easy once you get used to it. And then we take both film clips, basically cut off the right half of one and marry it to the other half. Move aside, dear. No, no, really, I insist. I can't let you go in there. Actually, we're all quite fine in here. Here's an example of the process called blue screen, where we put an actress in front of the blue. What we can do in the computer is just take out anything that's blue and replace it with what's called a map, which is just a black and white version of the shot. This acts as your cookie cutter to cut her out of this shot and put her in the final composite. Once it's moving, it looks very convincing and nice. Here's an example of a switcheroo. Watch the hand at the beginning here. That's a double, but it's kept in the frame because you can't tell who it is. This they shot on a blue screen as well, created a mat, cut her out, and placed her on the back. The blue screen element is very clever because by putting the blue screen reflected in the mirror, you get all the reflections in the bubble of the glass are all preserved also. You see the final thing. Here's the uh, double's hand going up, puts the mirror in position, and cleans out the frame before she comes in. All this stuff with the eye contact is what really sells it, like she's really talking to herself. I mean, come on, get real. One of the terms you'll hear a lot with visual effects is the term motion control. Motion control is basically taking a motion picture camera and putting it on a robot so the robot has control over where the camera moves. It's all programmed through a computer. On Parent Trap, you'll photograph one of the uh, actors doing their moves, saying their lines. The camera will be moved through it, basically by hand. That move will be recorded. Then when the second piece is done, that computer will take over the control of the camera and the entire camera will move through space, sort of magically fun to watch, as it does the same thing. Before we got to the final composite, we make an outline of the actor, and we can animate that outline to follow the actor around. And that cuts a mat, which is like a cookie cutter. So we can pick them up off their scene and drop them into another scene. Also using motion control for the pan, you have Lindsay panning to Lindsay. When they were first trying motion control, I did it at Boss Films, and they recorded me with another video camera. And then I watched myself off the camera. 
and then we tried it and it was really difficult. Having a stand-in instead of a monitor gives the actor someone to play off of, so for performance purposes, it's going to be better for them. Lindsay gets to look in exactly the right place for the right eye height. All the stand-ins are exactly the same height. The stand-in will actually reflect light and cast shadows, making it easier and more convincing. This is a great example of a shadow of the stand-in going across Lindsay. If she was talking to a monitor, you would have never had that. This shot was actually one of the most fun. The door does a few little magic moves. Take a look at the door. The door only opens this far. Then on the next, the door is already open. So the challenge was to get the door to keep on moving until it got to its final stopping position. This is what it looked like before it was all cleaned up. See how the door just dissolves to its two positions. So the challenge there again was to marry it. Basically one door tracked and moved so that it would continue to open until it got to its stopping position. You have to be really careful because sometimes if I'm walking in a shot, there's a split screen. So once I, I had to walk upstairs and I walked into myself. And it looks really weird because if, if, they, if they didn't know that, I would be walking through myself on screen. There was one challenge where the stand-in on the left, when she walks out of camera, she actually goes in front of our actress. So that created a big hole right here. So we needed to get that part of the actress back. And the way we did that is we took part of her jacket and morphed it. Basically took two pieces, one from where we see it at this point and where we see it at this point, and blended them together. Once you get to the scene, you can't tell that there's ever anything cut out of her. If I'm sitting here and then there's another chair right here, if I did put it on the other chair, I'd be hitting myself. Here's an example of a shot where we had to do a little bit of repositioning of the hand. When Lindsay was on the left, she had no one holding the paper in the exact position. So her hand points out just a little bit further than, than we would like. So we had to take her hand and, and put it back to a position that would be pointing at the paper. Otherwise, it's going to be pointing somewhere along in her wrist. You can see her hand. Lindsay in this on the left doesn't move, but her hand does. Oh, that's my dad. You have one hello picture of your mom, and I have one hello picture of my dad. But how these shows are probably a hello picture. My pathetic little thing will crinkle them right down. At the time, we saw this uh, pretty young girl uh, in both roles, and I don't think there's anybody here that didn't question that she was quickly on the rise, even at such a young age. I change over, I get my hair switched, and and I go on set, and I, I just do the best I can. It was very fun to work on because she looked like she was having fun. It was fun. I had several uh, friends talk about their children seeing the film and were absolutely convinced that twins were being used. They would not believe that only one girl had been doing both parts. 